Hi class, I'm going to show you how to do a little shortcut for polychord uh, notation in Finale if you use my template. Um, so here we have a little standard uh, progression to 2 to a sub 5 to 1 in the key of C. And you can see I have written the chord symbols as uh, uh, the chord with in parentheses the tensions being used. And uh, this is a 2 chord with a 9 and 11 and a sub 5 with 9 sharp 11 and 13. That's that Lydian uh, flat 7 kind of sound. And then a 1 chord with a 9. Um, so this is one way that we can write chords. Um, but another way that we can write chords is use polychords to express those tensions that the upper uh, upper portion of the polychord expresses uh, possible chord tones but also at least one available tension and in fact if you look at how I voice this you can see that the upper structure here of each of these chords is in fact a different triad that I have C major over D minor that I have E flat major over D flat 7 and that I have G major over C major 7. This would be a typical polychord kind of structure. You can notice that I have good spacing between this, more than a third between the two voicings, um, and usually some kind of root position, and I can drop the fifth for my lowered structure. Here comes the thing. In, in finale, if I was going to type that this was a C chord over a D minor chord, um, if I did that and then I hit return, uh, Finale loses the uh, the minor sign for the for the lower structure. It doesn't recognize polychord notation. Um, that's why we love Finale. Um, so I did a, a shortcut here, and uh, this is what you can do if you're using my template. Now there's already a video out uh, showing you how you can uh, sort of cheat Finale um, using slash notation. Um, but if you use my template, this is what you can do. Uh, we're going to, again, grab the chord tool. And this time what we're really going to do is we're going to start with the lower structure. We're going to say it's a D minor chord. And then we're going to push the up arrow, the up arrow. Um, and then we're going to do, here's the shortcut, uh, we're going to go shift colon, shift colon, and then number one. And that's a, a shortcut. If I go shift colon and then I push the up arrow one more time, you're going to see that there's a, now that you can see that there's a, a horizontal line. And then I'm going to push the C chord. And I'm done. I've got that one. And then this chord, I'm going to do the same sort of thing. I'm going to say, hey, on the bottom, on my lower structure, I have a D flat 7 chord. I'm going to go up arrow. And then I'm going to go shift and hit that colon button. I'm going to go one, up arrow again. And now I'm going to say it's an E flat triad coming on there. And then I've got that. And then I'm going to go to my last chord. And I'm going to say I have C major 7. I'm going to go up arrow, I'm going to go shift colon 1, and then up arrow again, and what I have on top for my upper structure is a G triad, and then I hit return. So now you can see really just fine looking standard polychord notation. This is in fact the type of notation that was used uh, for uh, only for a very long time that we had this vertical kind of notation. Sometimes we see uh, horizontal notation, but this is the standard for polychords, and this is showing that um, I'm expressing um, a triad over the, the root chord. Now remember, when you're doing polychords, you can only um, use polychord upper structures that they must have at least one available tension and not use any unavailable tensions. They're only supposed to be expressing chords that we already say are okay to use with the tensions that we say we're going to use chord scale theory of course and try to figure out what what tensions we can use um, and so it shouldn't change at all our analysis so again we're not going to uh, change a dominant chord into a sus chord or anything like that we're not going to uh, should be no change in the in the analysis it's just a different way of writing and so you can see that here are my tensions I've got uh, for instance a D flat 7 that's my sharp 11 that's my 13 and there's my 9 um, so for each of these here's my 5 and my 7 so I can have chord tones in the upper structure but also that D makes the 9 so that if I was going to voice this out for like let's say horns I might have my horn players just playing this upper voicing let's hear what this sounds like <laughs> So 
So we get this sound of two different harmonies going on at once. On the in the left hand, we have this descending line from D to D flat seven to C major seven. But here we have a different voicing that's going on from C to E flat to G. So it creates this more complex structure, and it's also a way of telling uh, keyboard players or guitar players expressly what kind of tensions you want, especially if you have players that don't know what a nine sharp eleven thirteen is. We can write this, and they'll have a much better understanding what it is. All right, uh, so uh, my thanks go out to Steve Kirby who showed me how to program Finale to do this and many other things. Um, and uh, go at it. Thanks. Bye.